Hello, my name is Guy Malachny and welcome to my video. Today I'd like to talk to you about augmented reality, how it's being used today and a possible direction for the application in the future. So today, if we examine the applications of augmented reality through the theory of immersion, as prescribed to by Looms, who goes into it in great detail on how you can deal with the sight, sound, vision, and the plot line, my personal favourite, to engage a person and give them a feeling of being there. Looms goes on to talk about the theory of representative reality, whereby can an artificial reality coexist with the natural one? An interesting thought. On current trends, we can look to the writings of Barfield, and he notes that smartphones and tablets are quite popular for the use of augmented reality, but he goes on to say that its natural conclusion will be implanting a device directly into the cortex of the brain. Now, I personally find that a little bit disturbing, but he raises the issue of, say, someone being a quadriplegic, and their only way to communicate with the outside world is via this device. He also points to the good work of Brown University's Cyberkinetics Lab and how they've already developed an interface, placed it into the motor cortex of an individual, allowing them to be able to operate a computer, a stereo and even an electric wheelchair. Now, to bring it back to a bit more current thinking and the wearable devices rather than the implant straight to the brain, we look at the work of Kipper. That gives us an indication of the current and future trends. Kipper points out that uh, computing is quite common in cars, watches, fridges, that there's been an increase in device connectivity and also a standardisation of those devices. Future trends, he points to gesture-based remotes that allows you to command interfaces just by a movement or a simple gesture. And he also notes the development of machine vision, where a device can see in ultraviolet, LiDAR, as well as video to be able to anchor augmented reality devices. Let's have a look at anchoring an AR target. Hello, today we'll be using Adobe Aero. It's still in the beta stage, so it still has a few glitches, but it is a pretty good application. So we'll create new. We'll make it uh, how we're at today. The first thing you notice is that the interface is very basic, very clean, very simple. This is where you anchor your assets. And at the moment, we are on the horizontal surface. That's good for outside. If you're inside and want to anchor it to a wall, you can go to a vertical surface. This is ideal for images. It's just like putting a painting on a wall. But I'm going to be working outside today, so I want to anchor it to the ground. Now, if I was to lay an image there now at the moment, it would lay flat. I want it to stand up, so I'll import it as an asset. I have a photo here of Ballarat, which I'll open. Introduce. The first thing you notice is it's a little bit small. So I'll come down to the bottom right and I'll increase the scale. And when I do this, it increases the other axes automatically as well. Now that's a better size. To control the um, asset, I can orbit it. I can go to the uh, right, to the left, up and down. I'll just orientate myself slightly to the front here. Whoops. Now, I can also dolly it in and dolly it out. So I can bring it in. And I can also move it by using this cursor here. So I'll just try and centre the image. That'll do. And I'll just dolly out to check it. Okay, that's in. Now, what I can do is add a detectable character. In this case, today we'll use clay. We'll put clay in the middle there. Now, to move clay around, I use these three controls up here. To move him, I click on that, and it works on all three axes. So I want to pull him to the left. I'll work on that axis there. 
And what I'm bringing forward, so I'll drag them slightly forward. Now you can also rotate clay by clicking on the rotate. And I'll bring him around to the left about 10 degrees. Now I can also add a behaviour to clay. And the way it's triggered is by on startup when you open the app. You can tap on the character and you're or you enter the proximity of the character. So let's start one on startup, and then we have an action we can do. You can play animations, images, audios. Today we're going to play an animation, and over here is our animation uh, panel. We'll get uh, Clay to wave to us on startup, and we'll get him to do that three times. So we'll now add another trigger, and we'll make it enter proximity this time. Over here's the distance where you trigger the action. So we'll have it about two metres. I'll set my action. I'll play another animation. In this time, I'll get him to point to the right. Right here. So how do we check this is working? I'll just dial it out a bit and we can preview. So if we go up here to preview, on start, clay starts to wave. One, two, three. And as I move in on the proximity, there we go. We're within two metres. There's the wave. Now, if I want to export this, I simply go over to share. I go create link. Not only does it give me a link, but it also generates a QR code. I can also export it directly to my computer. So, what beyond, say, history? Say, a social connection for augmented reality? Well, Lavali points out that uh, augmented reality is ideal for developing an avatar, where you could walk down the street, say, as a Marvel character, and interact with other people of similar interests. And there's also the possibility of being able to render a video image onto a LiDAR projection to form a form of hologram. I'd like to leave you today with a thought from Kipper. He's noted that the development of virtual reality is far outpacing that of the applications used to exploit it. That's a nice thought. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.